Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Rachel, what are you doing here? <laughs> you recognize people out there. Yes, I am. I am. Thank you, everybody, and welcome. Thank you, uh, everybody here in the room, everybody watching out there in the world. And thank you, Cece, for joining us. You got today. it. Thanks for having me today. Uh, you guys know this is this is royalty we got up here. This is uh, <laughs> what are these numbers? Biggest biggest selling female gospel artist wow. in history. Ten <laughs> ten time Grammy winner, twenty time Dove Award winner. It's a whole lot of, a lot of it's a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go back. You know. Back further before we work up to this this great new record. Okay. Um, tell me when did you you know what do, what do you what's the first that you remember getting up and singing? The first I can remember well yeah all my life yeah. but but my first solo I was probably about eight years old and um, my mom and dad said you're singing this song with the children's choir in church I didn't have a choice in the matter <laughs> and 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 I that was my first time singing out front. You know, which was kind of scary for me, you know, but but that was the beginning of taking us to this role where we are now. And when did you know that, you know, that you were good at this or at least that people <laughs> responded when you were doing it, whatever you thought about yourself, that you could see that something was. You know what? I noticed that um, during the first time, really, you know, and and after that. Every time, you know, I was made, because I never really liked being up front. Even to this day, that's not my favorite thing in the world. But um, it kind of comes with the territory. But I kind of knew even then that it was something that was more, something that was special, something that was more than, than, than really my voice at all. It was much bigger to me, you know, by seeing how the people responded, you know. And I don't think it was so much to me as much as to the music and the messages I was singing, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I've just been, I guess I've been thinking about it lately. Mm -hmm. My my son is a musician. Mm -hmm. well, he's 14, but he plays, you know, bands, whatever. Wow. And you realize how hard, like, what it is about being up front singing that's really a different, the way that you have to be the one to harness the energy in the room, the way yeah. that you've got to pull that attention. Yeah. Um, it's not just who's got the voice. It's a lot, there's a lot else that's there. Oh, could yeah. you Could you see that? you know, immediately, or did it sort of unfold like what, oh, I see what this, I see what this it, job is. It, it really unfolded, yeah. you know, because you start out, especially as a kid, that young, it's just, let me get through this song, you know. Um, then you kind of see the response of the people. Uh, if people are crying or either afterwards they come and tell you how it really blessed their hearts and their souls. And so you realize it's a little bit heavier than just singing a song, you know. And then, you know, I think my next stage was I started doing like background vocals in, in the studio, which was fun to me because nobody can see you. You're just back there singing and you, you have this gift. And my whole family sings. For those who don't know, I come from a pretty big family. My mom and dad both sang and I have seven older brothers. They all sang. I have two younger sisters. So singing was something we just all did, you know, and didn't realize that people on the outside would enjoy it. Um, until we started stepping out and doing certain things, you know. So, so as you as you keep doing it, you realize it's more than just the song. But now you're you're speaking in front of people, and then, like you said, it's it's what you bring as a person, your spirit, you know, the energy that you bring. All of that affects what you're doing. So it's more than just yeah. You realize it's more it's more of an art, you know. But so you you kind of evolve into that. And I'm I'm curious you. You, so you grew up with no secular music in the house, right? None, none in my house. Um, so you said the next phase of going into studio and starting to record, mm -hmm. how, you know, was that a? Did you feel like there was you had to there was a lot you had to catch up on? There was language or references or sounds or styles. I mean, how did that affect? sort of moving forward and out into the world uh -huh. without having had as much of that? Well, we didn't have it in our home. It didn't mean we didn't hear it. We grew up in Detroit, Michigan, <laughs> which was Motown. So Stevie Wonder, Gladys Knight, down the street, uh, should I say a couple of blocks, the Four Tops lived there. So we were very aware of it between school, the radio, you know. just so you were still exposed to all Definitely that. Definitely exposed to but, it. 
but that was yeah. the distinction of not in the house. Not in the house, right. Parents would kill you if it was in the house. <laughs> Um, so, so definitely grew up hearing those sounds, but, but also because of, we could only hear gospel music in the house, we found everything we could find that was gospel. And to our amazement, or should I say to our enjoyment and fulfillment, everything we needed was, was in gospel music. You know, we grew up listening to Andre Crouch, Rance Allen, um, I could go on and on, Shirley Caesars, uh, all my, my, Shirley Caesar, um, the, the mighty clouds of joy. So we had the quartet sounds. And really, now you look back, a lot of the Motown sounds came from the church. So so we were up on it with the gospel music in our home. <laughs> Still got, you, got yes. you where you needed to be. Exactly. We were right on target. <laughs> uh, but what, so talk about taking all that into, into recording um, and into doing, you know, doing things that were more produced or doing things that were using different arrangements or mm -hmm. things that weren't just what you would get up, you know, in the, in the church and sing, the, yeah. but bringing these other ingredients in, because then, you know, how that gets us to where this record is. Yeah, right. But talk about, in, especially in the beginning, sort of how to well, navigate Well, well, loving that. music and being uh, raised on the best, really. I would say the best. If I just name one artist, Andre Crouch, um, who's gone, he's no longer with us here, but he's in heaven now, but a legend. And his his sound and his production was second to none. You know, where growing up in the church, you know, you just come and you sing and you give what you have. And sometimes you have a good sound system, sometimes you don't. It's not, it's not really about that. You just come make a joyful noise. But when you're listening to top production, then when it's time for you to go in the studio, you don't want to do anything less, you know? So it kind of... It, it's a good thing, but it kind of messes you up. It's like you have to start off being the best right. that you can possibly be. And you realize, too, that, like you said before, it's more than just you, but it's who you bring in to produce, who's playing it, um, the vision for the record, um, who you're trying to reach. You know, all of that is, is involved in going in the studio for your first time. And were there, was that, I mean, talk about setting a standard, like you said, being in the neighborhood with the mm -hmm. Motown singers and those <laughs> records and everything else. I mean, do you, you applied those, those lessons? Oh, yes, you know, definitely. That, that standard as well? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I mean, a good singer is a good singer. A good production is a good production, you know? And so I don't think it's any different no matter what genre you're listening to. You can recognize talent when you hear it, you know? And you can recognize the best when you hear it. And so that's, as a, as a young artist starting out, that's what you're... That's your standard. That's what you're striving to get to. You don't always make it, but you at least come close. <laughs> yeah, once you make it, then you know, they don't need to bother to keep showing up. That's not, got to still have something to shoot for. That's right, something to shoot for. So, uh, so yeah, so speaking of the, the producers and the other hands uh, involved, uh, you had sort of a key collaborator on, yeah. the, uh, on the new, on the Let Them Fall In Love record. Uh, tell us uh, how this how this project came about and, uh, okay. and, who, and who helped you, uh, you know, well, bring, <laughs> bring it all in. <laughs> yeah, this collaborator was somebody who I never thought it would be. <laughs> and uh, about, ooh, about six years ago, my son came to me. And uh, again, talking about the, the whole family and being raised in music, and I think every generation gets better. You know, it should. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, and he came to me and said, Mom, I got an idea the way you should do your next project. And I'm like, oh, really? Um, yeah, just trust me, you know. I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not, why should I trust you? Um, you've never done a whole project before. But he came with this whole vision. And he just began, he, I know, I know, I'm, it's gonna be some sounds you've never done before, but I know what you stand for, so the lyrics are gonna be bold and it's gonna represent your faith, but, but let me have some fun with this. Let me, I mean, you've, you've done, been out here all these years, let's, just don't go in and do the same thing. Do something fresh, new and different, which I was excited about. I told him I wanted to do something different, but I wasn't banking on this different, you know? Um, but, but it took him a while to, to uh, get me convinced that this was a good idea. You know, and I'm sure I was probably pretty rough because, you know, in between being professional, I would throw the mom card out, you know, it's get somewhere and sit out. <laughs> Leave me alone, Alvin. Get, you're on my nerves right now. 
Uh, so it was a lot of that. <laughs> Sometimes an artist can talk to a producer that way, but... <laughs> Sometimes. That's the only time. I, I, he definitely got the worst talking to as a producer in my career. But but he stayed with it. He believed it, when even when I didn't believe it. And then finally, I got it. And how did he... So what was, other than it should be new, it should be different, what was he articulating as a... As a vision for this, I mean, what was as a vision? He said, he that? said uh, a lot of things, Mom, that you think are out of style are in style. Now they're back in. I'm like, really? Yeah, I want to go retro. I want to go retro. That's going to be really cool for my for my demographic of young people. I'm like, really? Yeah, I want I want all live music. You know, I want everybody in there at the same time. I'm like, oh no, Elvin, are you serious? Just trust me. Just his voice is deep. Just trust me. <laughs> I was like, no. Um, and then and then the different styles of music, you know. Um, when you listen to some of this, you'll hear some of the 60s and the, you know, and, and yeah. So it's just, it's just different all around. But the message is awesome. I think it's the best CD I've ever put out before. Not a small thing to say. I know, I know. And, and I really have to, like, eat all my words, you know. <laughs> And so that was one thing for him to convince me. Then when we got in the studio and he was producing, you know, for him to say, no, mom, that's not right. Do it again. I'm like, do it again. I was singing before you were thought of, <laughs> you know, but but he had the ears and he was right for me to articulate, for me to deliver each song the way it should be delivered. So so it was very humbling experience for me all the way around. But at the same time, it was one of my most proudest moments as a mom. As a mom and as a singer too. That's it's a yeah, nice as a singer too. Yeah. It's a combination. Yeah. So was there one? Was there? Do you remember a, a, you know, one of the songs or even a moment in a song when you were working on it when you could feel like, oh, okay, I see where, where we're I see going? where we're going with this. I yeah. see that he's, you know. I think I think one of the songs was "Run to Him." That was I, I really couldn't put my hands around it, but while I was singing it, you know, it, it gives you more of like a Supremes type feel. A run to him, this particular song, which is very different for the gospel feel, you know, or even the more worshipful CCM stuff that I've done in the past. But it hit my heart. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of those artists that it, it has to minister to my heart. It has to really come from the heart in order for me to be able to deliver it to a heart, you know. And so in the studio singing that run to him song, um, it was just awesome. Just the whole feel of everything. I was like, he's right. Elvis is right. <laughs> and it's not the first, I mean, you've worked with, you had, you know, Lauren Hill produced a session on you. I mean, you've worked with other I've younger great generation producers. artists, collaborated with other great mm -hmm. producers. What for you, you know, obviously so much of gospel is built on tradition and yeah. it's built on what came before and where it came from. You know, do you, uh, how do you think about the balance of, as you said, that's a, it's a kind of throwback sound, but it's mm -hmm. a different thing for what, even where gospel has been. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you think about keeping those different elements and, and feeling like it's what's right for what the music is, but, you know, where you're able to, to move forward? Well, well, to me, it's always the message. You know, the gospel comes in different styles, different flavors, but the message is the thing. So, so, that's that's the number one thing that whatever I do, if I'm singing, if I'm speaking, whatever I'm a part of, I want to make sure something that lines up with my faith. That's most important. Um, after that, then stretching the boundaries, doing things that are new and different, that might be scary to me as an artist because I've never done before, um, that's going to stretch me. Uh, that That's awesome because you're gaining new territory. You're, you're, you're reaching, actually, you're going to reach more people than, than if you just stayed in your box. So that's, that's always fine. It's always something new and different you should do. Um, but, but the faith, the message has to line up with uh, the old landmark. <laughs> so having said that, what, I'm curious for your thoughts on, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the modern, call it gospel, call it gospel, hip hop, call it whatever. I mean, certainly what somebody like Kirk Franklin has come to to represent and to accomplish, or even what he's done with Chance the Rapper, or things with Kanye, or you know, how do what do you feel about how you know right now where those worlds are are meeting? I think I think we have a lot of great young artists that are out. I love Kirk Franklin. I love what he's done, 
and what he's going to do. I think it's still just the beginning for him. Um, so, so I'm excited. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of another name. The the rapper. Uh, somebody help me. Who's the big Lecrae? That's what I'm trying to think of. Love Lecrae. Amazing. And and to see them coming up on charts that we've never seen gospel artists be on before. I think that's awesome. They're reaching the young people. They're reaching a different demographic. They're they're current, but yet the message is pure. You know, and it's and because of that. The message is doing more than entertaining people, but it's actually helping people. You know, it's building people up. It's it's reminding people that there is a God and that God loves them and that they're important and that they have purpose. And so I'm excited about that. And speaking of opening doors and possibilities, I did want to ask, um, you know, a little bit about your the, the church that you that you guys opened, yes, um, and you know how that came about. It was this was not in your this was not in the game plan. Not in the game and, plan at all. Uh, my husband and I pastor a church uh, talk, called Nashville Life in in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're coming up on five years. And that's who I was speaking to when I thank you, Nashville. Oh, that's who we've got. That's who, that's who I was who speaking to. Here. I see. Phaedra, raise your hand. She's a member of Nashville Life. <laughs> Who's, what are you on, spring break? What are you doing here in New York? Okay, you came to see me. Very good, very good. Next to her mom, hi. So, so we, have a lot of, we have a lot of great young people there. It's, a, it's about 250, maybe a little bit more, of millennials. It's a very diverse church. And actually it started by, by inviting some of my kids' friends. Well, actually my kids wanted to have my, their friends over for a Bible study. And we were like, okay, they just wanted to do it for a week. And we had them come, and their lives were just totally changed. And we were so excited about it. But still, we were like, God bless you. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> but this just started from people coming over the house. And like, then, they, yeah, yeah. And but, but it started like that. But probably 15 years prior, so a lady prayed for us, and she told us that we were going to be pastors. And my husband was like, we will walk on the moon before we're pastors. <laughs> Nothing against pastors at all. But um, just never saw that, never felt it. I mean, I've always ministered as far as through music, but never thought we would actually be shepherds of a house, you know. But the way God did it was amazing. And Nashville Life is an awesome place with awesome young people who I love it because it's almost like you're mentoring younger people, and they're, you're teaching them their value. And when, when you know your value, then you begin to value other people. And very non-denominational, very Non-denominational, like yeah, yeah. And, and it's pretty awesome. But Nashville Life in Nashville, Tennessee, come see us. And how do you balance the maintaining the consistent presence there and being, you know, what it is to, to do that along with the recording work, the performing work, coming up and doing this stuff? I mean, how, is, how has it all played out within your own life? Um, well, I'm probably, I'm probably not doing a good job of it right now. <laughs> and let me explain why. Um, it's been nine years since I released a new project. Um, in, that, in that nine and a half, almost ten years, my brother and I did a project. But five years ago, I said Alvin came to me about six years ago with the idea then five years ago, we started the church. Um, and that's why I said, Alvin, I got to put this on hold. I can't even think about anything else right now. We've been focusing on the church all these five years. And probably at the end of 2015, I told Alvin, I was like, you know what? I think I can do it now. I can focus. And, and that's what we did. So this is my probably my third or fourth week out and coming out as a pastor and an artist, oh, my God. I'm saying to myself, why did I do this again? So now we're going to find out how it all adds now. up. Now, so That's I need the... everybody to pray for me because I'm, I'm in the midst of trying to balance that, you know, because I'm trying to be home on Sundays, and I'm getting a chance to see great people like you. This whole social media world is totally different for me, so um, I'm just trying to act cool right now. <laughs> And able to, with plans to be able to get out and sing yeah. as much as you would, as much as you'd like to? Yeah, we're going to sing, we're going to tour um, this project, but we're going to do it as a pastor can, you know? I'm um, going to try to do Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays and get back home. I might be gone on some Sundays, but not, not, not often. And then through the week, we do what we do, you know? We, we're praying for people, we're, 
we're we're counseling people. We do what pastors do, and it's 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 probably my favorite thing to do now. And so um, I have more of a pastor's heart than an artist's heart, you know. And so we're working it all out. God's got it got it down. Whole new future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Um, you guys, I've had my I've had my time. So uh, now we've got uh, time for you guys for some questions. And starting right front and center. <laughs> my name is Chanel, and you said something earlier. You said um, there's good singing, there's good production, mm -hmm. but then there's the anointing. Mm. And I know you had that. And I just want to say thank you for making timeless music that continues to honor God. With that said, mm. I would like to ask you. What's the secret that you've had to continue this longevity that makes you want to just continue to run on and stay in this? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You said a lot, but thank you so much. Um, the, secret, the secret is my faith. You know, um, I believe that you have to have a daily relationship with, with your creator, you know, with the Lord. And, and that's what I do. I, I, it's, it's important to read my word every day. It's important for me to have time of prayer and meditation every day. And because it's out of that that I'm able to give, uh, give what I give. You know what I'm saying? And when you say the anointing, I believe whenever we accept God's purpose for our lives and we honor him every day of our lives, then he honors us with his spirit. Because it's, a, it's the anointing that actually brings change and brings healing and brings peace, all of that stuff, you know. But, but that comes from me lining up with him daily and understanding that if I, if I stay, keep this relationship right, then I'll be able to be a blessing to other people. Amen? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Great, 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 great. It's a lot. It's a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Uh, next over here. How you doing? My name is Hello. Kiara. I'm a longtime fan, so it's nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you too. How would you uh, describe this album uh, than your previous albums, like uh, more than what I wanted or I am? How would you describe musically these uh, songs on this album? I, I think I think stylistically it's different. Um, this album is is. It takes you on a ride, you know? And when I listen to all of my projects, uh, thank God I, I still like them. <laughs> Not everybody can say they can go back to their... Uh, yeah, almost. I, I might be able to pick out one or two songs that I'm not... I'm like, why did I do that? But but this one, to me, is just... It's, it's different in in that it, it, it kind of has more... Uh, more, um, what am I trying to say? Just different colors. Different, different colors. Yeah. It has probably more colors on one project than I've ever done before. Okay, so you're going to hear different styles, and it's going to you're going to jump, and you're going to be excited, and you're going to sit back, and you're going to reflect, and then you're going to want to dance, and then you're going to want to cry and pray, and then you're going to have that beautiful orchestra that's behind you that's taking you on this whole ride, and you have the big horn. So, so yeah, you have more more of a, a variety on this particular one. And was that okay. really was that your son thinking about? That an was album, him putting it as an, an album, album project. Yes, listening to the whole, and that's what's exciting. Even though we're in a uh, time now industry where everybody's more single driven, uh, you you really when you get this project and you got to get it, you got to listen to the whole thing so you can enjoy the ride. The beauty of the streaming world now is just you can keep it going. And yeah, keep it get going. Get to that track eight, nine, keep ten. It, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. All right, we can do one more here. Hi, it's nice seeing you. I saw you years ago with BB. Okay. And I wanted to know, is there a specific sound that you haven't done that you would like to try? And do you ever see yourself maybe stepping into things like movies and stuff of that nature? Um, no, I don't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> you've, gotten, you've gotten in front of a camera before. You've done TV stuff. I've been stuff. in front of the camera before, and I'm like, why did I do that? Um... It's not, I won't say that I never will, but it's not what I'm looking for. If the right thing comes and, it's, and it lines up with, with my life and what I believe and it's something that's awesome. Like, for instance, I just saw, to me, one of the best movies I've seen. I mean, Hidden Figures was just amazing to me. 
It was like a breath of fresh air. It was incredible. Um, so, so if the right thing came at the right time, then, I mean, it's got to be right, 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 for me to say, okay. <laughs> because really, my, my life is so into the, just the ministry part of what I do now. Um, so, so if God says it, then yes. And as far as if there's anything that I've, I haven't done that I want to do as far as the style of music, um, I don't think so. I mean, I like big band. I get a chance to do a little bit of that. So, you know, Tony Bennett is one of my favorites, you know. So maybe maybe that type of music would be fun to do. Got to have something still out there. Yeah, something, yeah, something yeah, yeah definitely. Everybody, thank you for uh, sticking around. Thank yes, you for watching. Thank you. Stacey, thank you. The album is Let Them Fall In Love. Yes. Out there now. Thank you.